edition. I am Priscilla Regina Naloga. On to our Kickstarter conversation, we get to look at uh, dissecting the Auditor General's report and what this report actually signals for Uganda's economy regarding 2024. Now, every January, Parliament does receive the report of the Auditor General on the audited accounts of government for the previous financial year. The report contains audit findings on government consolidated financial statements and financial performance of public operations and corporations, state enterprises and companies in which the government has controlling interests. The Auditor General, John Mwanga, revealed that his office undertook the special audit of the salary payroll and validation of government employees back in February 2023 and a total of 367 entities comprising of 162 ministries, departments and agencies, 176 local governments as well as 29 other government organizations. To scrutinize the details of this report, we are joined by Mr. Julius Mukunda, Executive Director with CS Bank. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, viewers. Okay. We do have uh, Alana Kembabazi, Kembabazi joining us also, ISA Programs Manager. Good morning and good to see you in the new year. Good to see you in the new year, which has started off quite rocky. Mm -hmm. What do you say, Rocky? With what the OAG mean? findings. I mean, you just want a slow start into the year, but it's like, bam. <laughs> 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 and it's going to be another fast, <laughs> first year. <laughs> we also yeah. do have Mr. John Walugam, the Executive Director, also with the Small Medium Enterprises Federation. Good morning and Happy New Year. Good morning and thank you for having me here. And Happy New Year, New Year to our viewers. Okay. All right, so getting into the nitty-gritties, we have to make analysis of the Auditor General's report, financial year 2022-2023, and you get to see a lot of uh, things that have been highlighted, uh, starting with the consistent increase in the total debt evidenced as in the increase of 107% in the five years, from 46 trillion shillings in the financial year 2018-2019, all the way to 96 trillion as of 30th June 2023. Now, these Revelations definitely underscore the need uh, for a comprehensive review of the financial practices and managements within the government. But at the end of the day, I would like to first understand what you make of this Auditor General's report. Let me start with you, Mr. Mukunda. Oh, I mean, the, the audit report is, um, is, is, is a condition by the Constitution of Uganda that every financial year we we review and find out what exactly the government does in terms of public finance management. And it must be done by an independent person, that's the Auditor General. Uh, the Public Finance Management Act requires the Auditor General to conduct a financial audit of our, of our activities as a government, but also the National Audit Act. And, I, and you can realize that from, from, I think for the last five, six years, the old, the old report has old, has increasingly become becoming more detailed. Mm -hmm. yeah, it gives us more clue on what is going in in detail. But also, you have more of special audits where and the auditor general gets interested in a particular subject and digs further to understand really what it is. And that's why we have now the revelation of the payroll uh, mess that we, that we are in. Mm -hmm. You you have you know value for money audits to see whether actually what we are investing we are getting the returns and of course there are usual financial audits on, on what is happening uh but by by and large is um reality it it gives us sort of like uh, a punch uh, below the belt because we i i really believe that we were progressing in a particular way uh but uh you know you find that there are some s s certain things you expect that to be done and done and not uh, for example, this, uh, I mean, have been we have been talking about supplementary budget, budget budgets, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they come, we are here, we, you know, we oppose it, we tell people we don't need it, everybody mm -hmm. says we need it. Mm -hmm. And guess what? At the end of the day, you are given a supplementary budget. The total budget is, is revised from, from, 40, from 48 to 52 trillion. But at the end of the financial year, the actual amount of money that has been utilized is only 43 trillion. Mm. An indication that we never needed a supplementary budget mm -hmm. in the first place. It distorted the whole budget process, but we never even utilized it. So
so those things really come on that we have ex very poor at planning and i think this is something that we need to appreciate that we are very poor we get back to the drawing board and build our capacity in planning uh, and secondly uh, for me really is uh, is that uh, we need to fix uh, the leakages into our system because now I'm beginning to, to believe that really supplementary budgets are for eating money in public service because otherwise what else would it be uh, would it be for so fixing leakages and getting more discipline mm -hmm. would be very very crucial mm -hmm. in terms of, of what we do as we go forward okay Alara uh, you do have ghost workers uh, something that has always come out as uh, an independent report by the independent observers somewhere somehow uh, the more revelations have come through for example in the Ministry of Health you do have uh, underutilized drugs uh, through education you get to see that some of these courses are people are studying are no longer supposed to be existent in the first place and so there's a lot of detail to the yeah. report as mr mkunda put it mm. that is rather revealing things yeah. that make you cry yeah I, I i think for me what was heartbreaking is one he first of all he emphasizes that our debt is not sustainable we have been saying that as civil society so it's you know he says that and then you come to health and about less likely less than half of the vaccines bought by a World Bank loan expired. Mm -hmm. So like like Julius is saying, what are we doing as a country? Like truly, what are we doing as a country? Because you are borrowing and then you're failing to utilize what you've borrowed mm -hmm. and the people who you're borrowing for are still in need, right? You get there, you look at um, recruitment in the health sector that we've been shouting all year. There was money for recruitment that was not utilized. <laughs> and the position was, so we've been here and Ministry of Health has been telling us it's about money. But there is money they have not been using, right? Um, and, and also when it comes to debt situation, um, you know, the health sector is very heartbreaking, first of all, because it has COVID vaccines expiring, it has ARVs expiring, and he tells it's, 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 it's interrupting the life cycle. Then he talks about simple, basic things, mixing expired drugs with non-expired drugs. I even got scared. I see now, if I go to a hospital, I have to check, ex how will I check a the expiry date? A public drugs. hospital. Yeah. And you know, like I get the box of drugs. How will you check it? Because if it's a vaccine, the only time you interact with it, when it's, it's, there. In the, in, it's range into yes. your body. Store. But even simple things like mixing, you cannot separate them. But um, when, it, when we think about the debt issue, the only way we can get out of debt is actually to sufficiently mobilize domestic revenue and to utilize our resources expeditiously. Okay. On the revenue part, we are just letting minerals go out of our country untaxed. And he goes through a couple of them. Sometimes it's just a failure to harmonize the law. I think the excuses URA gives in these instances are just very heartbreaking. Because as an organization that has talked a lot about curbing illicit financial flows, around really getting domestic resources. If we want that independence, Museven is always talking about, we can do without these donors, we can do without these loans. Why are you letting minerals go out of your country just for? Mm -hmm. You know, particularly because we have made a real effort to step up our legislation. So that one there for me was completely inexcusable. Right now we need money more than ever. And it should be expeditiously addressed. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course on the, on, on the expenditure. How do you have that many ghost workers? Like people, like sometimes okay, so this is just planned corruption. Should have ghost workers, but they shouldn't no, be that many. There's, that there's things say? where you can say. <laughs> no, there's things where you can say. Maybe they kind of we had it updated. Someone okay. died. Yeah, yeah. Updated mm -hmm. our payroll. Mm -hmm. But the numbers here are so many that it is clear it's a concerted attempt by people to just steal money. Like they have planned the corruption. Mm -hmm. And so you're a country that is here. You're running. We need, oh, World Bank uh, is going to cut. We are in debt. It's constraints. Oh, we need money. We need money. We need money. And your population, that's what, that's what hurts me. That Ugandans are still struggling. They're not getting the drugs in the health facilities. They're not getting the health workers. You know, the public service on this payroll we got to forget you public do, services do and we don't see them you remind me office. of uh, an investigative <laughs> report by a journalist uh, on the you know a ghost health center in the west yes, of uganda yes uh, exactly and it's it's, uh, it's but, but now you see this one was just it was striking because this is not the first time they've kind of verified particularly with pensioners if you don't know for example for pensioners you have an annual you have to 
proof of life mm -hmm. thing you have to do so there, there's ways in which you could catch this early and i just think that it's good well i guess that he, he focused on this as well he does talk about special um audits that are coming up, value for money audits and, 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 and others, and he mentions Livoa. Remember Parliament and, and, and a number of us have been talking about issues like Livoa. And like Julia said, those become the, the subject of supplementary budgets. You have supplementary budgets that come in, they have either wage expenditure or they have Livoa, or things which are not unforeseeable. So I'm glad and I'm really looking forward because he said two weeks and me I noted that date down mm -hmm. although I didn't want to start my year with all of this caviar but now it that it's out, it. let it come out. I believe what is hidden shall be exposed and I want you gardeners to take to, to take interest. Yeah. Yes, the report may it may not be available to you fully, maybe it's online or it's long. But when you hear these things, you ask your leaders about them. You guys you are going to have to pay back this money. And for the young people in particular, me I feel sorry for you. Because you are not getting healthcare now. Education like you said we can talk about the, the issues with the courses there and all of that and then you're going to have to be you're going to be taxed so much to pay back this debt if you don't start asking questions now we're in trouble okay. and um and, and i think it just also reflects i'll say that one thing it reflects for me the state of society right now we we're talking about now and, and one of the things i was talking about with someone this morning here was you can you see that government if it decides can do things quickly and and, and cheaper mm -hmm. and can move but it has decided not to right and when they decided for example have the ambulances packed at uh, for example people said but as you cater to our visitors how about us the people now when you come back to the oag report i think it just shows you all the reasons why government has chosen not to it is not that we don't have money it's a political choice and a failure of, of, of governance and leadership here to actually make sure we get these services. This is look very good. Uh, looking and analyzing the report on behalf of the business community, investment community, as well as the entrepreneur community, what do you make of this report from where you sit? Well, I think, first of all, it's a good thing that there's a mechanism for government to check itself. Mm. Uh, because uh, if you don't self-reflect, then it means that it's easy to say, oh, those people are complaining because they are not informed and so on. Mm -hmm. So when this report comes out, I think it provides an objective basis for all of us to say, come on, what can we do better? For instance, if you look at um, the total budget for the previous financial year, mm -hmm. they were projected to, the projected revenue was about 48 trillion. 0.132, then the increase is about 48.136, but the expenditure was increased to 52 trillion. And mm -hmm. already there was a deficit of, of about um, 4 trillion shillings. Now, as Julius has mentioned in the end, they ended up spending less. But actually, when you sp look at what they actually spent, they spent more on uh, recurrent expenditure and spent mm -hmm. less on development expenditure. So it means that where it matters for the citizens and businesses, less was spent. Mm -hmm. Where it matters, you know, for wages and so on, mm. um, more spent. If you look at the issue of the parish development model, parish development model, as you know, has been um, one that government has prioritized to lift about 39% of those living in abject poverty uh, and in the subsistence economy to the money economy. That's about 3.5 million households. Now it's found that about 604 beneficiaries received money either for non-existent projects, projects yeah. or ineligible projects. So it means that it, we may be spending money on something that we hold dear. And we all agree it's very important, but it must be done right. It shouldn't be a vehicle for people to see for no resources mm. from the taxpayer. Mm. Now we also have the issue of these ghost workers, about 10,192 ghost workers. And as she mentioned, how can you have so many <laughs> ghost workers, yet you have head counts, you have what not, I mm. uh, hear audits for having to report and stuff. So IT systems that have been introduced, so uh, we need to investigate this further. In this day and era, we should, because you have national IDs, you have all these things. In that age, you can't really talk about, these are stories yeah, of the 90s. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> these days you can't and talk even about the 90s, ghost the anything. Numbers were lower than what yeah, these presenting. days you can't talk about ghost anything. So maybe that's something also that uh, that we ought to uh, mm. address. Now, mm -hmm. if you look at the issue of the public debt, uh, the public debt is growing at about 107 percent, as you've mentioned, it's now 96 trillion, and it's growing more than the GDP. 
which is going at about 39 percent so I'll, for the viewers there i'll tell them that uh, if you're in your household someone is borrowing more than their salary they are earning a hundred thousand mm, yeah but every the, the, this year they go and borrow two hundred thousand there they borrow three hundred thousand so that's something that we ought to address and the driver of this borrowing is we are spending more than we are bringing into domestic revenue mm -hmm. now many people say let's increase domestic revenue mobilization definitely but what what of cutting expenditure because that's the easier bit let's first start by cutting expenditure because it's much easier to cut expenditure mm -hmm. than to it's much easier to cut expenditure than to raise a revenue mm -hmm. especially in a, in a difficult economic environment as you're in so in the, there are a lot of issues but what we also don't want as a business community is for us to you know ugandans once it becomes a topical issue like now everyone talks about Ota general report and then that's it we wait for the next year and the same stories come up so if we can have a matrix of actions now the speaker received the report good what is parliament going to do we don't just want to media appearances in kosa say hey, hey, hey you and then that's it no let's have a matrix to say of the hundred issues that are raised this is what is going to be done to ensure that they are addressed. Okay. I think that's a better way of assessing uh, this report. All right, so that is the simple assessment of the Auditor General's report. Now we're going to let you digest on some of those points. When we return, we get into the nitty gritty starting with the public debt. You're watching Morning at NTV. The Auditor General's new report has left observers in very deep reflection as a huge chunk of the entire revenue collection may end up into debt servicing. I've been, I've, I've been mentioning 86%, I mean 86 trillion. But the, the fair has gone to the books and it's now 96 billion, trillion as of June 2023. So if I'm going to count all the loans we have had from June 2023 up to now, now we are above 100 trillion. So I, and, and I think he's very right because when I reflect on the total sum of debt service for the next financial budget, I begin to feel the pinch. Because out of the 52 trillion, 23 trillion is for debt service. And so, basically it is like, our projection is 29 trillion to collect taxes, our debt is 23 trillion, so when you subtract 23 from 29, you remain only 7 trillion. So as a government of Uganda, we should be having a budget of 7 trillion only. And that cannot be equivalent to any departmental budget. There is debt that has been contracted because SMEs are provided goods and services to government. Now, there is debt that has also been contracted through court awards and these kinds of things. So for me, I wouldn't prioritize that. I would instead prioritize this money that businesses have used to supply me goods and services. Why? Because these businesses are essentially lending to me at zero interest rate. Yet they are borrowing money from banks where they have to pay interest of above 20%. Fiscal indiscipline, budget experts say, is the picture painted by the Auditor General's report released yesterday. According to the Civil Society Budget Advocacy Group, findings in the document risk and doing costly public finance management reforms recently undertaken by government. But you have supplementary budgets that contain salaries of people. And you can ask yourself, what kind of an accounting officer? Budget for other things, but not salary for his employees. That's high level of indiscipline. But now the world is saying actually that last year we had a budget of approval rate of 48 trillion. But because of certain amount of budget, we revised and made it 52 trillion. Now, sad to say that even 58, we were only able to consume and use 50, 43. So we never needed a supplementary budget in the first instance. 
Because even the amount of money available, we will not finish it without the supplementary budget. So, so these are some of the things we say we need to have tighter fiscal rules to manage our budget. The story of ghost workers has uh, been here for a very long time. And you know, we've now created IT systems, we've verified civil servants, we've asked teachers to register. How is it that this problem persists? Is it that there's some kind of cartel that is benefiting from these kinds of situations? So maybe these are things that ought to be looked at in, in more detail. Maybe the IT system we thought would help us to, and the head counts and so on, and on the correct solutions. Or maybe they are the correct solutions, but they aren't enough. You know? so, these, these are all things that, uh, that uh, need to be addressed. Then the other issue is around negligence. Because eh? now he mentions that about 5 million COVID-19 vaccines expired while in stock. How can this be? You know, we spent lots of money. Another disturbing reality about project financing and execution. 22 projects sampled by the Auditor General found end-disbursed loans of up to 118 billion shillings with commitment and interest fees already being paid. 35% of the projects we have <laughs> do not have concept notes. <laughs> 32 have no profile. <laughs> For now, according to experts, the state of affairs is that Uganda's day tree financing risk is getting out of hand. Five years ago, it was 3 trillion shillings. The new estimate is 9 trillion shillings for the next financial year. The question is, with interest rates rising, will Uganda be able to pay back and later on extend services to her 46 million people? Malcolm Sime, NTV Tonight, Business. Will Uganda be able to pay back and at the same time ensure that there's effective and efficient service delivery to her 46 million Ugandan shillings? We do have uh, Julius Mukunda here, whose heart went out. Um, <laughs> Because the figures he's been working with were 86 trillion shillings, but the revelation no, so of, uh, of of 96 trillion shillings is a public debt <laughs> shocked him and uh, made his heart want to jump out and leave him alone. Mm -hmm. Now this is the, uh, com uh, comprising of a domestic debt of 43 trillion Ugandan shillings as well as an external debt stock of uh, 52 Ugandan trillion shillings. Mr. Mukonda. <laughs> Has no, your heart settled now? No, I... Have you come to yeah, terms Is it a now sitting up and down? It's... Uh, no, I mean, you can't. You really you can't when you get to further internalize these figures. Mm. And I understand wh when you get the numbers and you want to put some meat on them and say, where is this money? Where is this money that we have accumulated quite all this time? Uh, and yes, I had known the, uh, the 86 trillion but now we have 96 and if i add the recent supplementary budget that we're going to borrow now we are 100 already mm. uh, so but should that so, so my issue actually is is that okay fine we can acquire this mm -hmm. but there, there, you see there are two things you need to understand the way you utilize it and the way you utilize it is is going to be dependent on how you acquired it so how is a project brought in the government and and what the general is telling us and i'm now beginning to know why our project is stalling and what the general is saying is saying that 35 percent of the projects do not have concept notes mm. 39 lacked project profiles and 32 did not undertake visibility studies now to an ordinary person just to understand this is that when you're going to start a project you sit down and say i'm going to build i'm going to build a road mm -hmm. And this is going to have these kilometers. It is going to from from Masaka to you know to to, to Mbarara, for example. And this is how these are the people who are going to be affected. These will be the beneficiaries. This is what is going to cost me. You put everything down, and then you start the process of acquiring the loan. Now the other journey is saying we don't have that. We, we just say opposite. we need a road, a road. 
and we get the money. But then how do we get the money when we have not given those details? On no, it is, it is internal. I mean, if you write a, a very nice proposal, and some of these, that's what we say, we used to have those, these computer Which is an projects. indicator of a loophole, really. So it's yeah. serious loophole. It's, serious it's loophole. very serious loophole. So that's why I have been given an example of, of the tree. We've talked about the, the UNRWA tree. Mm. If we had a cons if we had prepared for the project very well, we would have known that there is a tree, not the normal tree, but a spiritual one. That before you even acquire a loan, a, a, a loan from from mm. from the bar, from outside, you would have already compensated the people of the, the tree. The study would have been made. But to when they saw a tree, they thought it was a normal one. They called the value to come and evaluate it, to to value it, and he said he calculated the number of timbers that are required to come out, and he gave them the amount. But little did he know that the tree was a spiritual tree. He needed a formula, a spiritual formula for the tree. <laughs> so, and, and, and the incidents delays the project. So it ca the project cannot be delivered. And that's why now the other thing is telling us that when he sampled 28 projects, he found out that these projects did not utilize 777 billion Ugandan shillings. Mm -hmm. You sign but you have the money is still there you haven't mm. you haven't you have you haven't touched it but furthermore is that he sampled another 27 uh projects and he found that they had failed to absorb 118 billion you know itself has an disbursed loan of 456 million united states dollars when you bring all of these together it tells you that we run to do, sign contracts we are not ready. Even when we get the money, we can't utilize it because we have these spiritual roads that cannot cannot help us. So that's why in the uh, uh, ginger Kampar Express Highway cannot take place because we were not prepared. Mm. That's why in PG Busega Highway we talked about five years ago is still in limbo. We, it can't work simply because we are not prepared to execute it. So to an ordinary person when you say 96 trillion it boils down to okay how am i going to be affected as a person as an individual mm -hmm. and there is one way the minister has said broadly and i have liked him this time by the way he has come to say the truth he said yes i have a budget of 52 trillion ugandan shillings to spend in the next financial year mm -hmm. but the money available for me to spend on ugandans is 21 the rest is for debt servicing and that's why i was telling people the formula say fine if you have uh, more than you know you know uh, almost the entire half of your money on debt servicing and you only have you can only collect 29 trillion probably the money available for you is 7 trillion you're going to shilling that you're going to spend on so it means that forget about medicines forget about new schools forget about uh, water points forget because government right now the debt has constrained it mm -hmm. and god forbid we shouldn't have another disaster because it would be extremely very difficult for us to address to that therefore let us right now take the hard questions mm -hmm. and say there are certain things you are going to postpone or don't talk about anymore in the budget cut the budget say money for monitoring cabinet decisions it is very important to monitor that we know but you can we say can we do it next year and the monitoring for example the two billion that money. was going to monitor the Luwa project yes yeah, this Luwa project we know it has problem let us leave it out mm -hmm. uh issues to deal with creation of new districts let us you know stop on that one but also let us be very frank and candid and say we can't manage the public sector we have mm -hmm. to spend on mm. and say fine instead of buying suv vehicles these Porsche vehicles for our former employees because they're entitled mm -hmm. to we could buy you could buy a much match up with developed countries no, they we do the buy, same no, let us, let we, are, we are coming so down to say now uh, as of now a picture, driver a raum a raum car for, for, for in the military yeah, yeah. you <laughs> don't <laughs> buy a raum car yourself why do you want your former <laughs> Because we don't have the money. So yeah. really for mm -hmm. me is is to is is for government to really and parliamentarians to, to come down and say, let's take the hard question and say this is what I won't spend on. Okay. And this is what I'm not going to spend on. Alana, implications on this on the economic <coughs> development. So I there are two things. One, um 
again the real cost is going to go to Ugandans who are not going to get healthcare education because right now we are, it has already happened we're already spending more on servicing our debt mm -hmm. than our health education we've been shouting and it shows a fundamental flaw with how we assess our debt so when when the loan uh, request comes when you're talking about the debt we have been talking about it in purely economic terms right you look at things like the balance of payment like we'll be, we will be able to pay our creditors but we never think at what cost like are you if you're paying your creditor when you don't have beans in the house then <laughs> you then there's a problem with how you are assessing your ability to gain more debt so i'm glad he's saying that and he also points out something quite um uh, worrying which is that as we accumulate this debt to likely get worse because now the interest rates if you start going about 50 percent right are going to get higher because people are scared you won't be able to pay which will mean you'll even have more debt the fact that there's a lot of domestic debt is very concerning it means government is just crowding out the private sector because why would you lend to the private sector when you can lend to to, to government you always want usually to lend to government if you are a bank so we are quite we're quite worried about that um and I, I i would say that again for me it comes down to how do you get out of this situation i keep getting back to domestic urban mobilization i know we've talked about and julius has completely and i completely agree with everything he has said around cutting our spending and being realistic but we're also playing around with domestic revenue mobilization this report talks about tax waivers and it talks about the fact that there's there's quite a bit of tax waivers we waived about 1.2 point 1.2 1.293 trillion. trillion was waived under the gazette but overall it was 1.4 one seven trillion mm -hmm. and he said he wasn't quite clear besides the one point two nine two nine three which was big under the gazette he wasn't quite clear where the uh, how the others were communicated to parliament because you're asking how do you get into this situation right where is parliament where are our people who we said mm -hmm. to look into this matter well, and even some of the taxes that are being waived they're not being communicated to parliament number two when you think about things like loans um how they get approved the process becomes chop 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 so no one is asking all these critical questions and they just approve as no rubber stamping so there's there's a real issue there um and then he talks about the fact that okay if you're going to say we have waived all this money in taxes what is the benefit to ugandans and most of these enterprises have not increased their workforce they're supposed to employ more staff but they say they say that most of them are performing below the 50 percent threshold and they say the fact that the ministry is operating outside a framework and we have really as eyes are going on about tax waivers they say, as long as you keep giving tax waivers to certain companies particularly multinational companies ordinary ugandans are paying the cost one you're coming and squeezing those of us you can get in the system for even more mm -hmm. but number two if you're not seeing the trickle down effect to the economy to hiring more people then you are losing money that you should be using for our health care education and therefore having to resort more on borrowing to make up for that shortfall so i think there are two the, the domestic debt situation here I, I really liked how he painted it it is of no shock to us we have been saying that government should have a human rights impact assessment of debt which means that you are looking at your ability to meet your creditors needs but you're also looking at the other issues of one is there participation is there access to information do people like the members of parliament do they have the full information they need to pass these loans number three what is the impact on citizens what is the impact on your private sector what is that so we've been asking for a more robust assessment of, of the of, of, of how we look at our loans and and we hope that government will wake up to this i am so glad to see this because in five five years ago isa was expressing concerns about the direction and we've seen that in five years a hundred percent 107 percent right increase and like it's literally like you know um it, it, it's, it's really it's crazy and I, I hope that this time government wakes up all right mr Orgembe, this leaves you in a hot seat uh, focusing on debt utility as well as uh, the tax waivers that she has mentioned uh, some mm -hmm. and unknown to maybe our legislative house uh, intentionally or unintentionally mm -hmm. but also maybe there's a it's something to consider about perhaps because of uh, um the let me just say it as it is perhaps there's uh, ignorance in, the, in some parts of the room uh, on which they can actually play on they, they don't need that information they won't understand that information to make the informed <laughs> decisions thereof uh, so at the end of the day we still have to ask ourselves how do we manage our public debt and mm. uh, have healthy financing mm.
Okay, so I think first of all, we are reading from different scripts. I was reading at, I was looking at uh, government undertook what they call a debt sustainability analysis to see uh, how are we doing on our debt. Mm -hmm. And they said our public debt, whereas our public debt is projected <laughs> to increase in the next two years, debt levels <laughs> remain manageable and below those in most countries. In addition, a reliance on most concessional financing has helped ensure mm -hmm. that debt remains sustainable. So what you see is a very nice picture. If I'm the finance minister and mm -hmm. you bring me this debt, uh, sustainable analysis report, I'll say, yeah, definitely, let's borrow more. So, um, so on one hand, the Dr. is saying our debt is sustainable. On the other hand, the mainstream minister is saying, well, it's manageable. We are doing mm -hmm. better. You know, it's like we are, we are the second but last. They give you it's a like we are second last in class. And say, like oh, the last. <laughs> but I'm not the last. There are some mm -hmm. people that are doing Our neighbors. And, yeah, <laughs> so I think Kenya. that is. <laughs> so for me, that is. <laughs> so that is definitely the problem with regard to debt. There are two things. One. Uh, as a country, it's not true that we are now relying mostly on concessional finance. And as you know, the World Bank has indicated they are mm -hmm. not presenting any projects. Now, if a country like Uganda that uh, has been benefiting a lot from the kind of concessional financing that only the World Bank can offer, if they pull out, then you are, you are up to in a much worse situation. I expect that the, the next year's report from the Ota General will be worse mm -hmm. because uh, you, you find yourself in, in a very difficult situation. What do you then do? You then have to borrow domestically or you have to borrow money from shady lenders. Uh, those shady lenders are the kind that would look at the Uganda Airlines um, <laughs> Boeing packed in Dubai and they capture it, you see? So mm -hmm. this is the position and Ugandans have to mentally prepare themselves uh, for it because if you're not cutting your expenditure, it means mm -hmm. you have to borrow more. Mm -hmm. Now, on the issue as she's mentioned, uh, domestic revenue mobilization. Ultimately, if you want to increase domestic revenue mobilization, you have to ensure that the private sector is growing. Because it's that private sector that is going to give you this money. And so for me, the competitiveness of the private sector should be something that ought to be prioritized. Secondly, we need to ensure that we are more careful when we are giving out these incentives, this relief, mm -hmm. these tax waivers, all these things. And, mm -hmm. and the unfortunate thing is that it's not the SMEs that are benefiting. That's, mm -hmm. that, that's the unfortunate thing. It's the multinationals and the so-called investors that are benefiting from these waivers and they don't need them anyway. Because research has shown that any serious investor's consideration is not a tax waiver or a tax incentive or any incentive for that matter. Because I can't be a serious investor and I want free land. Mm. I can't be serious investor and I want free land. Some come with nothing. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> they give them the land, they give them the money, they, you know. So Are you an investor? <laughs> I'm, I am a domestic investor. <laughs> Thankfully, the president, these days the president, the president is convinced that we are domestic investors. Initially, he was. <laughs> <laughs> you are but, nothing but these at days, all in the first These time. days, he invites mm. us. We had a meeting with him. I think Kanuna Karima has helped a great deal in this regard. Yeah. So we had the meeting the other day, and you know he was really engaged with us. So the point there for being, we must ensure that our private sector grows and our private sector is able to pay the right money. Now, after the money is collected, it must also be spent well. And those are the questions mm. that we have. Because when we ask, okay, how, how is our money being spent? You are SSR. Our role is to collect. Mm -hmm. Our role is to collect. True. Then the auto general. My role is just, just to chase. The document. Yes. <laughs> no, uh -huh. Then you ask Our role is to oversight. <laughs> <laughs> to so, okay, now, who, who, <laughs> who should we ask? About, <laughs> you know, so we, we must get someone ought to be accountable. Yeah. for these things and that's why I'm saying it's nice to have the report but it's even better if we come up with actual mm -hmm. solutions and say let's solve this Not, and people shouldn't the government officials shouldn't say that people in civil society and business mm -hmm. are pointing and choosing fingers no we're in the same boat we are Ugandans mm -hmm. and we want the best uh, for this country so we should look at this as a point of reflection to say what improvements 
can you make? Because, for instance, these COVID vaccines, this was a World Bank loan. No, if it was our own money, that's fine. But it was a World Bank loan. So it I means wouldn't even, even, I wouldn't even get most. Uh, it would be sad for me that our own money even is. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still, no, all oh, money is bad enough. Mr. Mukunda, it's bad again. Okay. Let's, let's, let's move away from the no, subject. Sure, but there is a point, I think, there is a point, I think on, on revenue uh -huh. that uh, there's something that shocked me, that these gold exporters yeah, refused to pay. Yeah, and it's there. It's I was really asking there. myself, fine. <laughs> How can I do that? Because really, we are being overtaxed. So how can I do that? And it's simply, no, I'm, I'm, I'm being refused. I'm, it's too much. Can I? Can we? I'm not paying. Not I, think, I, I am not paying. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Can we first negotiate <laughs> yeah. the rate? Mm. I, 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 the same should be extended to the other. You know, I mean, really, I mean, I'm the kind of negotiating power they have is really. They have gold. What do you Ugandans? <laughs> no more Ugandans <laughs> have. And again, this is another debate that we can't put to bed today or now. The causes of uh, debt burden have, have been mentioned. Yeah. The implications thereof have also been shared. But the question still remains, how do we have and build a resilient public debt for us as a country? We'll leave it at that when we come back. Ghost workers. You're watching Morning at NTV. Chari chitari mubu sikuwa sikuwa, chizi kilira, na senga kuchikuwa ya kumila rubaro umuliro. Kutahinda kukere uga vitono nyo sivi inji. Jori eyo, eliyebi kwenye gabi inji, biwandi ya gato kukira ko, obodi ya obichu keko. Na hika fumenti yetu yambi, haba sauba wano, kibi intubie karamia, engudote muzifako, umumuoza musolo, umusolo gulagawa. Wabula, obuli duwabu ostule dobo zilio, litu uke kubechikuwa tako. Nzize kujaya antiba ngamba at polling station ya jeni noronde lako yeno. Na uba angobi yo sina kuronde lako. Akanyo meroko, akayo gera na fi, kako mieo. Beye bitu banange. Oda kusabuni yeka yeka. Tutuwa saving and ascent. Awakazi waga la kunova. Ira kadeko na tuliba kukutu kako kucharocho. Ote ise kubikuruma. Kapanda matu ya moko wa simbebi toke. Bia bufuzi, bia mfuna, bia maka, obe nsonge ndara yona. Abachara wa mwenchile tobuzi. Tebako la. Atema tuongeza. Kwa kwa kusente, zaka meza, katiba tuwe kereo kusente kutono ebitu vya bayi. Kwa kwa tachigambie, ya gamba antigundi atade vigambo. Ebi vyo, vyo gere na fe. Kwa 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 We also encourage you to continue reporting some of the things that are not good on the roads. The traffic violations that you meet on the roads, police, it's very, very important for us to keep on sharing. These days we have very many platforms that have helped us to move information from point A to point B or from uh, different sources to other sources. So let us use, for example, WhatsApp to report all these things that are not good. Because if we keep quiet about these things, they are the ones which are going to cause accidents on uh, different uh, roads. This message was brought to you by NTV Uganda. On the next episode is brought to you by Where Funireka Honor at an outlet near you. On the next <laughs> with three delicious flavors in the 300 ml and 500 ml bottles, there's an honor for everyone. Where Funireka Honor at an outlet near you. Babe, more honor, please. But won't get an honor. Freshness you can taste. Watching morning at NTV. It's morning at NTV. Stephen in video of Pepe Switch. We are coming to you live from Queensway. This is just next to NTV Road. You can see the beautiful flyover here at uh, next to the clock tower heading towards in Zambia and heading, to, heading towards the city center already. People are enjoying the, the, be the beauty of the flyover. Many of them have seen taking selfies as they 
connect from either Zambia or Chibuye to this site near the fire brigade headquarters and it's easier for them and it's also safe for you uh, to use that side of the flyover other than uh, crossing in the mid from the middle of the road because you never know any road crash can uh, you could be the next victim of a road crash but let me begin by telling you uh, the fog traffic is really really so free and uh, fast flowing uh, coming from the city direction of uh, Kampa Road connecting towards in Zambia as well as coming from Zambia traffic lights uh, joining this uh, Queensway you only be losing uh, three means from Zambia traffic lights to this uh, flyover uh, project that's still under construction uh, there are some other uh, staff that are contracted uh, to do some beautification and the road works here as well as the team that is coming from UNO is also here still to make sure that they, they do the, the inspection and supervision of the works around going as we know that's also have a few days to the non-aligned movement summit and B77 past China that's happening next week uh, for the next two weeks we shall be engaged but also uh, for you who is coming from Interval does you get towards this flyover just under that's where you're going to be finding the heavy traffic congestion uh, looking at towards the side of Shell near the Queensway as well as that side of uh, Samarian Road connecting you towards the new rather the old tax park here the flow of traffic is a bit slower but still you can wait for those five minutes because the traffic officers are on the ground making sure that yes you access either Kampa Road or that side of uh, or, uh, the old tax park much faster we won't be engaging uh, Alan Sempewa, the Corporate Affairs uh, Director of uh, Uganda National Roads Authority on the progress and uh, how much they've been able to carry out on this project since 2019. First of all, I, am, I should tell you, Alan, that I'm impressed uh, by the way people are enjoying the, the other side of the flyover getting down because I know uh, around this place, but the border riders are so rowdy, uh, anyone can be a victim of the crashes. But I'm impressed uh, with the, wa the way people are, are using that flyover. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, Stephen. Good to see you today. See you too. Uh, first of all, bring us to speed. Yes, I know some people were able to watch the news yesterday, but at least for now, I can see vehicles being turned towards this side. Is it is it going to be the same way all through? You know the advantage this project comes with are the widened lanes that we have added lanes than we had previously. So we are able to move traffic at any one point in any one lane, uh, depending on the gymnastics of the of the traffic flow in this area. So this is why you see we have the liberty to put you on this lane and take you on another, because we have we now have widened or added lanes on the Kampala flyover corridor. But isn't this so dangerous? Because if you can see the border border riders coming, crossing from that side, yeah. even these vehicles, instead of continuing this lane, they are now turning to this other side, which is supposed to be carrying people coming from Kampa Road. Isn't this the, dangerous? The good thing is it's guided. It's guided. It's guided. We have a traffic controller here. We also have traffic police. So at any one point, they can guide you depending on the flow of traffic in this place. The beauty again is we have now wider space within which to move traffic. Just like you see when the, for the pedestrians over there, they also have now a wider space within which to move and flow. So they're able to cross from the other side to these ends without interrupt, interrupting uh, or interacting with the traffic flow, uh, especially vehicular traffic along the flyover corridor. Uh, one can see people using the flyover and the, roads, uh, the, the vehicles moving in a free flow to the city. But we wonder how much is left of this project that you began in 2019. Okay, we are nearly complete. The project is now at 93 percent. What we are left with are the final works, uh, beautification. We're going to put uh, uh, traffic signals within uh, this intersection. We are finalizing with the lighting. The entire corridor is supposed to be lit. So we're doing the final touches on the project. But as you can see, the city can now breathe. 
the objective of this project is now met, that is to decongest the CBD, and uh, we've opened up the, the place to traffic. So we're nearly complete. And then uh, crossing from this side of the Queensway yeah. to Ginger Road, uh, that is uh, still part of your work. Uh, what is at stake now? Are uh, we opening that side also soon? Which, which side exactly? And from uh, this side, crossing towards uh, Zambia and then joining Ginger Road, when are you uh, beginning on the works connecting oh. to Ginger Road? That is the uh, Kampala Ginger Highway. Oh yes, that is the second uh, lot of the project. Because this is the final, first, le first uh, lot of the project. Mm -hmm. But we also have another that will kick off from Mukwano, where this one has stopped. And it will take over at, up to Kirigum House, expand around the former, clock to uh, former electoral commission offices, and then um, uh, pour into Wape Avenue. And from there is where the Kampala G Expressway will then start. So that is, uh, we are now in uh, financial discussions with the, the financing uh, partners to see that they can quickly come on board and that project commences as soon as possible. Well, this place is going to be so busy, uh, beginning from this weekend, I know the summer advance teams are coming in uh, for the two important summits, that is the Non-Aligned Movement Summit, but also the G77 Plus China. Uh, how, I know you're working with police, KCCA and other agencies, uh, first of all, tell us the plan about, for someone who is just watching us now, the plan of this place uh, as we head into these uh, meetings. Yeah. First of all, to, to update you, is traffic has been opened to use this section for the entire project of the Kampala flyover. So if you're coming from, say, uh, the city centre, and you're heading to, say, Gaba Road or Sambia, you actually can, you only use the downer lanes, you know, they are, they are widened lanes that you can actually use. And if you're heading to Sambia, you go on top of the underpass, then turn on the right to go to Sambia Gaba Road. But again, if you're coming from the city center and you want to proceed to Mukwano, you again have two options. You can either choose to go under the underpass, the, the tunnel road, or again stay on the lanes on the left side of the, of the, of the, of the lane and proceed up to Mukwano, Chibuli, and the Ginger Road. Okay. I've seen also the tunnel, beautiful as it is. Uh, I, I know the, the viewers are not able to see the tunnel now, but at least some have seen it on your Twitter handle, but also they can just face it when they come towards this side. Uh, maybe explain to it for us, how should they use the tunnel from which side to which side? It's an amazing facility we have, first of its kind and of that design. It's uh, 360 meters long. We are also making efforts to ensure that the tunnel is safe because one of the concerns for our road users has been the safety of that tunnel road. But uh, to assure you, we'll have the tunnel lit 24-7 because during the day the tunnel is still dark. And as you know, light is only at the end of the tunnel. So within the tunnel it's dark. So we'll keep it lit all through the day and at night to ensure that it's safe. We'll also have surveillance cameras around it again to guarantee safety of the road users. Uh, that tunnel can only be used by people going to Mukwano and Ginger Road. You mean the pedestrian? Uh, um, let me also come to that. But also if you're coming from Mukwano and, and they say Ginger Road, you can use the tunnel to join the city centre but also proceed to Entebbe. There are restrictions to use of the tunnel bridge or the tunnel structure. Uh, I want to say that the tunnel is going to be restricted to use by motorcycles, famously the known as border borders, to tricyclists, perhaps tukutukus, uh, and bicycles as well, and the, and the cyclists, plus pedestrians. Those are restricted from using the underpass section of the, of the right, flight. Alan, I want to go back to, to studio, but one last thing is uh, this place is known for a clock, uh, as a clock tower. That's the significant thing that comes into one's mind whenever you talk about this place, the clock tower. We can see the pillars, uh, I should call it a pillar maybe, but the clock is not yet here. Uh, any plans that the clock is coming back anytime soon? Indeed, like you said, it's one of our big monuments that uh, Kambala is known for, and we're going to bring it back. Already the, 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 the structure is up, what is left a few implements to be added in and including our clock, okay. the tower the clock itself and we're going to have a replica clock put back as you know the older one uh, we didn't find the older clock in there but we found a few implements of the of the order clock but very soon we've already ordered for it and will be put in uh, the final word is to call upon uh, road users 
to exercise caution when using the Kampala flyover. Uh, for pedestrians, if you intend to cross, please utilize the pedestrian bridges that have been put on the road. Do not cross or interfere with the traffic, vehicular traffic. We've made provisions, we've now put wider uh, walkways, but also let's utilize the pedestrian bridges to cross from one side to the other. Thank you. Accidents. Thank you so much, Alan Sempewa, the Corporate Affairs uh, Manager at the Uganda National Roads Authority. I have now turned you back to studio. You've, you've heard it all from him. And the key word is exercise caution as you use this place. The, the, fly, the footbridge is there for you. Stephen Imidon Fefeswe Chibuga handing you back to Priscilla Regina and Naroga in the studios. All right, thank you so much, Stephen Bide, for giving us that update on uh, the official opening of the Kampala flyover uh, within the central business area that is the Queen's Way. However, it still speaks into what debate we've been having here, analysis of uh, the Auditor General's report, and I'd like to get a reaction uh, from each one of my opponents this morning. Let me start with you, Mr. Walugembe. Okay. Uh, we, we have a so first of all, I, I wonder why they call it the flyover project. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, what I saw is walkways, walkovers, and so on. Yes, there's a turn and so on, but you know, for anyone who has been uh, traveled, and uh, traveled and understand and if you go if you go to the Africa <laughs> Express Highway and if you go to Johannesburg and so on, you you know what a flyover is. Of course, um, so I think that the name for, for me would, would the project name was it may be a walkover or underway or whatever. So that we don't raise expectations. Because now here what we are resolving is a pedestrian problem. But as far as I know the issue is not a pedestrian problem, the issue is the traffic. And Looking at what I've seen this morning, I, I don't know it will be a miracle that will, will solve that traffic coming. But let's hope for the best, but that's my, um, my sense. All right, Alana? On the walkway? Uh, on the fly. On the fly. <laughs> I, just, I was just telling you this. I think we should be getting back to discussing um, more serious things. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, Project I'm, I'm, analysis. I, 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 I just don't. You know, there are certain things where like, I'm glad it's pretty. It's white, um, but I just don't know that they are so significant to Ugandans right now. Ugandans have been mm -hmm. shouting about healthcare potholes, industrial area. If you can just fix industrial area, certain things. So I think that's where that's where my sentiments on this are. Like it's nice, it's okay, it's there, but um, <laughs> no, I, I, I would, I, there are more pressing okay. issues for me as a country. We are coming to the pressing oh issues God. of ghost employees. Uh, Mr. Mukunda, you, you had uh, alluded earlier to some of the causes of uh, public debt, mentioning how we bid and get this financing. And it's just a very, uh, the way it was presented in the Auditor General's report, we miss out the important elements in getting this yes. money. We get the money and then we remember, oh, we should have, we should have. Uh, when like St. Pebble was asked what next, he said, no, we're looking for financing to complete uh, do to this. <laughs> Just stop to this and we said and we continue. <laughs> no, I mean it's. I mean, uh, I mean, the, the project. This project started in 2019. Yeah. And I, w I was just trying to catch it in 1921 to. And it would have actually continued three, if if it was not for Nam uh, to quickly beautify it. Three project. But it it, it it tells you project management in this country that is still a very big challenge. Um, executing on time and yeah. on budget because we have so much overruns <coughs> in some of these projects. But also he's, he's telling you that no, we have not done this because we are negotiating with a financial to see how we can fix it. And then you ask yourself if this, if this is a part of a strategic plan mm -hmm. in terms of how to solve uh, the traffic problem in this country. Uh, but you ask about the, pay, the, the payroll, payroll management? The, the, the ghost workers. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. I, I, I think for me is, uh, I mean, it is very simple. Is that we've come a long way, and and we've discussed here that in nineties, in eighties, I mean, you, you know, if you could talk about this, you could understand. But this is a period now where we have systems, we have IT, people have gone to school. We have best examples on how other countries have done that, but you still find that consistently in the other general reports, consistently there has been a ghost 
workers or government employees. And, uh, uh, and for me is that if you are an accountant, if you are a head teacher of a primary school and you don't know how many teachers you have, then you should be fired immediately. Mm. If you are a permanent secretary of a ministry and you don't know the number of employees you have in your ministry. Active employees. Because when you say employees, yes. it could refer to the dead, to the absconded. No, 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 no. no. Employees Active means those who come to work who are alive. Day, those who have your contracts mm. and you don't mm. know them you need to be fired because if you can't know your employees you can't implement a project for heaven's sake you just cannot and i can assure you it's not about ghost employees it's not going to be about ghost health centers as of today i've never received an official mm -hmm. communication of the government that Ntungamo does not have ghost health centers I went to a rock government budget consultative meeting in Mbarara specifically for that and I raised the question. The chairperson was there, the chief administration officer was there, the technical, nobody would answer that. An indication that these, as of today, these ghosts exist. Not only in Tungam, I believe the whole country has got health centers. My fear is this goes to ghost schools, this goes to ghost roads, this goes to ghost uh, water points and this goes to ghost medicines and all the service delivery points we have in this country. And <clears throat> to me, to deal with this ghost people, their business is to deal with accounting officers. Mm -hmm. You cannot be a chief administrative officer and you don't have a list of health centers in your district and you don't have an active payroll of the people you have in your district and you can vouch for them. If you don't have that for heaven's sake, be relieved of your duties and let somebody competent take over. So we should not bring politics into this. This is a question of management and competence that those who can't do it step aside and let those who can do it, do it. Lastly for me is the question of syndicate. You cannot appropriate for a health center or a school that doesn't exist or people who don't exist because it's no longer a question of you signing off no there is a system and a process that requires you to go that requires you to go through to be approved to be an employee of government and if that system is now corrupted let me tell you it, is, it means that the person at the entry and at the exit are all involved in ensure that these ghosts are part of the process and people are eating from them. And the parliament must take action and the people must pay back. Which reminds me of uh, one of the <coughs> biggest highlights of 2023 as far as ghost business is concerned, the OPM Mabati uh, that was met for Karamoja. <laughs> they signed these Mabatis. Yes. These Mabatis were sent to offices. And so you could now they were received by quote unquote some people. And who are those people that received mm. them, Alana? Mm. And you could trust uh, now. Uh, yeah. You can trust yeah. the yeah. system, you can trust, yes. But I, I think that corruption in this country is planned for. It's no longer like all oh, the money comes and I, because you know they, they, they are they, they are rules in public service. This is not a happenstance. You get eh? so for this to be pulled off, it's a real syndicate of corruption. But also when you get to PDM, the ghosts are still there. According to uh, OAG's report, 53 beneficiaries in 44 PDM circles had non-existent projects. Mm -hmm. So even at that level where the community itself is your check. But at the financing level, they're they are there. the banks to make sure that people receive them. And they, the money was disbursed mm -hmm. to these ghost things. Then afterwards, they're like, oh, they're ghosts. Like, how long will this circle go on? Because there's a real cost to ordinary Ugandans. If you think about the money that was wasted in these ghost workers, what could it do for our education sector? Where the OAG's report actually say it talks about the poor quality of learning in UPE USA schools, talks about the low capitation, talks about all the things we've been shouting about the tight financing, among others. Okay. And then you have these these, these ghost workers. So it, it shows that the fact that I've been hearing these ghosts, particularly in the pay the pension whatever payroll, mm. for since I was young. It just shows that, again, it's corruption that is planned for where someone knows they're going to benefit. And I'm very, I'm very concerned because now I, I would expect the PSST to have taken strong action because it's, it's one of the things that he's, he's the one looking at the overall picture. He knows that with government's current economic outlook, even maintaining its wage bill, mm -hmm. 
has been of concern because like some have been we've been talking about sometimes you're borrowing to pay to pay wages right so why are we just sitting there and addressing this and in what world is this okay so i i i think i want to speak to the president i think you need to read this report yourself i don't no one should give you a summary <laughs> sit down if there's one thing you do this year read this report and actually begin to take action because we are tired they present this to parliament parliament itself has been grappling, has been kind of unearthing some of these issues well, when you speak they of action, talk um uh, i i as of yesterday you did have uh, the president of nigeria taking action uh, for their cop 28 we were complaining about our 600 they took 1400 <laughs> to escort the president <laughs> to cops so uh, resolution to that if the president has to move abroad uh, a limitation of up to 20 people is what he has been given to move with to wow. anything you know well, and, and, and that is Nigeria, Nigeria that is right? exactly that is Nigeria, Nigeria. you know Africa's <laughs> biggest economy but, but, Mr. Ogembe but, but can, I just, can I just say question. one thing on our time is sorry it's Mr. Ogembe okay. has to give yes. us a closing yes. remark uh, speaking of action uh, the speakers say they're going to you know go back and uh, make sure that they reflect on this um, report and take action what are the recommendations that you have mm. no so the recommendations would be to look at each of the issues if you look at public debt we need to look at how it's contracted and we also need to look at the priorities in terms of spending we also need to look at uh, minimizing uh, borrowing domestically and also ensuring that we borrow more from concessional lenders and if we have antagonized any like the world bank let's find ways of having discussions try to get back on board on the issue of uh, negligence, uh, mixing vaccines, uh, expiry, the p certain people ought to be held to account and competent mm. managers need to be hired mm. to ensure that that is not the case. On the issue of ghost workers, I mean some of these people are retired, some of them are dead, mm. some of them are, are, are absconded, so you must have a system that is able to track this. Now we have blockchain technology and so on. You you know there are many systems that you can ensure that this is uh, reined in. And then you also have issues of overpayment, underpayment, illegal deduction. So it's very it's very sophisticated. Mm. Uh, but I think uh, PSST because I see him emphasizing ICT a lot. Mm. I think can use some of these tools to ensure that they address. For Parliament, they shouldn't just be a backing dog. They need to actually come up with a clear plan. Say, okay, these are the issues that are raised by the Auditor General. This is what we recommend. Not just bringing cameras and then just squeezing people, you mm. know, like it, some kind of showmanship, no? They need to ensure that there's a clear action matrix that every Ugandan can follow and that will satisfy us that these issues are being addressed. All Thank right. You. Is our economy resilient after all this that has been submitted on this table this morning? Well, it's something that only you can answer for yourself, for your contribution, assessing your own contribution uh, to this Auditor General's report. Are you the one who's actually harboring the corruption, the plant corruption that was talked about? Or you, are you the one who's willing to actually read out that corruption from the system and uh, so that we can collectively be able to move forward uh, economically, socially, as far as development is concerned? Max the end of our program this morning. Thank you so much for being with us. Good day.